we are starting the discussion of uh, aim june 2020 what is this and what are the question which were asked in 2020 now see listen carefully the first questions was after obtaining informed consent for the management of uterine fibroid ureter is injured intraoperatively during hysterectomy even after careful measures doctor is not responsible for his act under which doctrine now listen carefully these four options are given the first is novus actus intervenes the second is medical malacrens the third is physician error and the fourth is res ipsa loquitur now listen novus actus intervenes what is the meaning of novus actus intervenes new action intervening any new action intervening in the case is novus actus intervenes like i am giving a very simple example someone got cardiac arrest attack and he was taken to the hospital when he was taken to the hospital he got some injury and because of that injury the person died that is new action medical malacrens will discuss later because this is a very important topic physician error error by physician and res ipsa loquitur what is res ipsa loquitur thing or fact which speaks for itself anything which proves the medical negligence is an example of res ipsa loquitur ऐसी कोई भी चीज जो मेडिकल नेगलिजेंस को प्रूव करती है दैट इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ रेस इट्स ऑल ऑफ सो हियर यू कैन सी वी द डॉक्टर वाज गोइंग फॉर द यूटराइन फाइब्रॉइड हिस्ट्रेक्टमी एंड द यूरेटर इज इंजर्ड नाउ दिस इज मेडिकल मालक्रेंस यू कैन सी व्हाट इज मेडिकल मालक्रेंस इट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज मेडिकल मिस एडवेंचर इट इज अ बैड और अनडिजायरेबल आउटकम दैट इज अनरिलेटेड टू द क्वालिटी ऑफ केयर प्रोवाइडेड दैट इज unrelated to the quality of care provided it means the thing which is undesirable and that comes as a outcome is a medical misadventure or medical malacrens any there are three types i have told you in the classes itself therapeutic misadventure diagnostic is mis- misadventure and experimental misadventure so this is a case of medical malacrens that is undesirable outcome which is unrelated to the quality of care provided so the here answer is medical malacrens but just rule out all three it is not novus actus intervenes first important it's not novus actus intervenes it's not physician error and it is not res ipsa loquitur what is res ipsa loquitur again i'm telling you anything which prove medical negligence sufficient to prove medical negligence is res ipsa loquitur like a surgeon forgot a swab inside the body that is sufficient to prove negligence this is res ipsa loquitur so just rule out the option it's a medical malacrens now this is actually this question i had so many uh, like uh, i had so i had been given so many times this questions like there are multiple options used multiple options were given by students and i am still confused whether this option and the the lining of the question was the same or not now see a patient comes to the casualty with life threatening injuries now listen here the main part here the main part is life threatening injuries life threatening injuries there was no time for the consent and doctor started life saving surgeries with all precautions death of the patient occurred doctor is not responsible under which doctrine now like see the option first and you can easily rule out some options and then you can proceed for the answer you can see the first option given is doctrine of anticipation the second is again res ipsa loquitur the third is doctrine of conjugated consent and the fourth is doctrine of extended consent now see it's not res ipsa, res ipsa loquitur what is res ipsa loquitur any fact or thing which speaks for itself or i would say anything which is sufficient to prove negligence anything which is sufficient to prove negligence sufficient to prove negligence so you can see this is not a example of res ipsa loquitur here the question is about life threatening injury and friends it is equal to have you seen this this is a very important ipc that is 92 ipc now see what is 92 ipc a patient comes to you with life threatening condition and there is no chance of getting consent from the patient or relative what you would do like you will start the treatment without consent so it is a protection of a doctor against life threatening condition without consent mean it means you can proceed for the treatment without consent this is 92 ipc now see the option it is not res ipsa loquitur ye res ipsa loquitur nahi hai the thing or fact which speaks for itself 
it is not rest ipsa locator so second is doctrine of conjugated consent what is the meaning of conjugated consent conjugated consent means multiple consent taken at a single time two three four five consents are taken at a single single time it's a conjugated consent it's not a conjugated consent you can see doctrine of extended consent what is the meaning of extended consent i'm going for a single procedure or single surgery in meanwhile i got to know that there is some other consent needed for completing the procedure there is some other complication some other other surgical surgical i can say dissection is needed at the time of surgery so what i will do i'll take another consent to complete the procedure so i it, it's it's a consent taken it's consent taken for extending the procedure and it is extended consent again i am telling you it's not a extended consent it's not a conjugated consent it's not res it's a locator it is an example of 92 ipc now the question comes what is doctrine of anticipation what is doctrine of anticipation looks so, like this particular word is not given anywhere but it is anticipated that it's a life threatening condition we can proceed we can proceed for surgery or any life saving procedure to save the patient without taking consent so i can say it is an example of 92 ipc i would say so by ruling out this is the answer given in this particular situation is doctrine of anticipation 92 ipc okay so this was question number 2 you can see this was question number 1 you went for the uterine fibroid surgery and the ureter was damaged this is medical malacrens and this is doctrine of anticipation that is a type of 92 ipc okay a flame burn case comes to casualty with burn involving head face neck listen head face neck both arms only arms okay both arms and the whole anterior chest whole anterior chest you can see we can follow rule of 9 no doubt rule of 9 we can follow rule of 9 and if you see the rule of 9 this area is 9% this upper limbs are 9% anterior part of the chest and posterior part of the chest is 9% and this area and this area so there are 11 area which are divided in 9% so this is known as rule of 9 now you can see rule of 9 head is 9% okay both arms if you see like this is this is your upper limb okay it is divided generally it is divided in 5 3 1 1 this area is 1% this forearm is 3% and the remaining is 5% in folks few books it's given 4% okay so we can calculate both arms at 4 into 2 that is 8% and anterior chest is 9% and if we are taking it 5% like if we are taking head is 9% plus 5 into 2 that is 10% plus anterior chest it is 9% so it it comes 28% by this one and it comes 26% by this one so its approximate answer is 27% now the some students are saying sir it is not anterior part of the chest it's a unilateral part it's a bilateral part but remember according to the question i am putting this area is 9% the both arm covers 5 into 2 or 4 into 2 that is 10% plus 9% is anterior part of the chest that's a question is asked and here the best answer is 27% so this is rule of 9 and we can divide 5 3 1 part the parts of five area 5 3 1 or you can say 4 4 1 so it, it is given in different books this is rule of 9 to calculate the burns now minimum punishment for death of patient now listen it, this question is given in drug and cosmetic act in fact and this question it was not supposed to be asked like in aims like exam but you can see you can see this is the twist in this question death of patient by spurious drug spurious drug now actually if you see this act death of the patient if the options given are 1 year 5 year 7 year and life imprisonment you can see spurious drug it is defined under drug and cosmetic act 1940 drug and cosmetic act 1940 section 9b and 17b according to this for manufacture and sale of spurious drug minimum 3 year 
imprisonment extended to five years with five thousand fine. But again, I am telling you here the twist is death. Here the twist is death. Death due to spurious drug. The punishment mentioned is life imprisonment. The punishment is life term imprisonment. So that is a very important. Only death caused by spurious drug. The minimum punishment is life term imprisonment. So here answer becomes this one: life term imprisonment. So this is given given in Drug and Cosmetic Act. You can see this act, and it's a very important one: spurious drug death, minimum imprisonment, and like Section Nine B, Section Seventeen B. So this question can also be done by exclusion criteria. Now, which one of the following statement is false about snack bite management? Okay. Now we are proceeding one by one. Simple questions. ASV, that is anti-snake venom, is the mainstay of the treatment. Yes, sir. Anti-snake venom is the main state of main state of the treatment. And if you see, four snakes venom are used in anti-snake venom: cobra, common karate, Russell viper, and so scale viper. You can write down here: cobra, common karate. Russell viper and so scale viper and so scale viper. These are four important snake which are used for the treatment as an anti snake venom. Now see, first option is correct. Now if you see third option, neostigmine and ventilated support should be given to the patient along with ASV. I told you in marrow classes. If you see the classes, neostigmine is given, and this is the mainstay of the treatment. Okay. third hound pit viper is not included in polyvalent asv in india yes sir i told you these are four snake which are used as a polyvalent anti snake venom hound pit viper is not included and as i told you in the class this is the right answer neostigmine and atropine may be given for karate bite no my dear friend listen carefully this is the explanation why atropine is not given because atropine is ach inhibitor acetylcholine inhibitor it is useful in cobra bite not karate bite because cobra toxin is acting post synaptically where karate toxin act at pre synaptic membrane this is a very important mcq cobra toxin action is post synaptically when karate toxin act is pre synaptically so atropine by inhibiting acetylcholine will be very dangerous for this one that is karate toxin so it is not given in karate toxin neostigmine and atropine may not be given in karate bite this is a very important mcq atropine is acetylcholine inhibitor it is useful in cobra bite not karate bite because cobra bite is acting post synaptically and karate toxin is acting at pre synaptic membrane so this is another important mcq now this is a very important mcq in clinical practice What is this? A 14-year-old girl comes to AIMS Emergency OPD with her mother. Listen, with her mother, history of penovaginal penetration by neighbor was reported to the doctor. Penovaginal intercourse was done with the consent of the girl. Now the girl refused to consent for medical examination. What will you do as a doctor? Now, first of all, sir, examination of victim. Examination of victim. So here I am putting a word: victim examination. and victim examination is 164 acrpc victim examination is 164 acrpc listen carefully 164 acrpc suggest how do we examine victim and there are other procedure for accuse examination 53 crpc and consent of the victim is mandatory that is also a part of 53 crpc anyways we are coming to some important point the first is should not call police what will you do as a doctor what will you do as a doctor friend should not call a police that is incorrect answer you will call a police should counsel mother and daughter yes that's absolutely right should call police yes absolutely right should do examination even after refusal my dear friend no you should not go for examination after refusal informed refusal to be documented doctor sir if mother is if mother is refusing for the examination or if girl is refusing for the examination this is informed refusal and it should be in written manner 
and it should be documented. That is another important part. So anyways, victim examination of a 14-year-old girl is a very important part. This is 164 CRPC. Now see, what are the important points to be summarized? Friends, it is a medical legal case. So any medical legal case, first inform the police, MLC. What is MLC? Medical legal case. Consent is must before examination. As she is 14 year old, she can give consent for physical examination. As she is 14. Actually, I have told you for physical examination, you can give consent after 12 years. So she can give consent for physical examination. But when she refused, then doctor should counsel her that this case may go against you due to your refusal. So, counseling is very important at the time of refusal. So, be careful. Even after counseling, if the doctor has failed to obtain consent, then he should take the signature of the victim and her mother in an informed refusal form. Again, I am telling you, my dear friend, informed refusal form, it means this should be documented. Informed refusal should be documented. This is very important part. Again, I am coming to all five points. Should not call police. Yes, it's a medical legal case. Call the police. Should counsel the mother and daughter. Yes, for examination should counsel. Should call the police. Yes. And Oksab, I have told you, every medical legal case should be informed to the police or magistrate. And Oksab, anyone can tell me which CRPC is this? Every medical legal case should be informed to the police or magistrate. This is 39 CRPC. This is 39 CRPC. Should do examination even after refusal? Not at all, my dear friend. Informed refusal to be documented. Yes. Informed refusal to be documented. This is 164 CRPC. Again, I am telling you, friends, in 164 CRPC, examination of victims should be done with consent. With consent. And informed refusal should be documented. And every medical legal case should be informed to the police or magistrate. This is also 39 CRPC. Now see, this question is very important. Identify the seed in image. Identify the seed in image. Datura, opium, cannabis, marijuana, nigelia, sativus. Now sir, these are the seed of Datura. These are the seed of Datura. These are the seed of opium that is cuscus. These are the seed of opium, which is also known as cuscus. Ah, these may be black seed, these may be brown seed, cuscus, used for making sherbet or sweets. And these are the seed of cannabis that is marijuana. So anyways, sir, these are three important seeds. The first is datura. Second is opium or khaskas. Third is marijuana. Now, what option is left? It's not like the Tura, you can see. It's not like opium, you can see. It's not like cannabis or marijuana. It is a very important seed that is Nigeria sativus. It has many forensic uses. Especially, it is used for curing or for the treatment of blood pressure, for the treatment of diabetes mellitus, or the, for the treatment of some metabolic syndrome. And even it has some important use in toxicology. It is used to treat some chemical. It is used to treat some chemical. And it is used to treat some toxin. Or it is used to treat some poison. And sir, Nigelia sativus is a very important. These are the black seed, also known as Kalonji also known as Kalonji, very commonly used in Middle East. And these are some implication of, and Oksab, again, it's a question of exclusion. These are not Datura seed. These are not opium seed. Opium seed are known as, known as Kaskas. These are not cannabis seed. So we can easily get the answer. It is Nigeria sativus. Okay. Now, this is very important when identify the injury shown in the image. This is a image of hand, palm. You can see what are the possibility of injury. You can see this maximum dimension is length. This maximum dimension is length. Maximum dimension is length. Margins are clean cut. Margins are clean cut. Friends, 
margins are sharp and clean cut that suggest it is incised wound. It is incised wound. And observe, incised wound are very common in defense wound. Incised wound are very, very common in defense wound. So you can see these are the examples of incised wound or defense wound. Lacerated wound, not it's not a loss. Lacerated wound, it's not abrasion. Abrasion is a destruction of epidermis. It's not a contusion. These are caused by sharp edge vapor. These are caused by sharp edge vapor. These are known as inside wound. So this is a very important picture given here. This is inside wound. So injury present on the hands are, this is a very simple explanation, are incised wound, may be due to defense. Why clean cut margin, length is maximum, multiple injuries are at same orientation. You can see this injury, this injury, this injury, this injury, this injury. These multiple injuries suggest these are defense wound, incised wound. Identify the injury shown in the image. Sir, this is an image of head. This is image of head. If you see the margin of injury, if you see the margin of injury, you can see this margin. Like I'm making the diagram. If you see the margins of injury, see this one. Okay. Margins of the injury. These are clean cut margin. These are clean cut margin. And these look like incised wood. Looking like inside wound. Looking like inside wound. But sir, when you examine this injury very carefully by using magnifying lens, you will find crushed tissue, crushed tissue and crushed hair follicle. You will find crushed tissue and crushed hair follicle. Doctor, what does it suggest? Listen carefully. The margin look like incised wound and you will find crushed tissue and crushed hair follicle. That means it is caused by heavy blunt force. Heavy blunt force. Any injury caused by heavy blunt force leading crushing of the tissue, crushing of the hair, bridges, hair follicle suggests this injury is a lacerated wound. And Doctor, this look like incised wound. This look like inside wound and I have told you very simply, these are the injury which are seen on the bony prominences. What are the example of bony prominences? Example of the bony prominences are scalp, this area, forehead, another area, eyebrow, another important area is eyebrow, scalp, forehead, eyebrow, perineum, Iliac crest. These are common area and even the anterior part of the tibia that is known as shin. Anterior part of the tibia that is known as shin. These are the area here skin width is minimum. So because of separation or because of easily separation, skin is minimum, skin is minimum, dermis is minimum, fibers are minimum. That's why this wound look like an incised wound, but it is caused by heavy blunt trauma, maybe stone or maybe any other heavy blunt trauma. These are known as lacerated wound. So these are known as incised looking lacerated and friend, incised looking lacerated is also known as split laceration. Incised looking laceration is also known as split laceration. So anyways, this injury is inside looking lacerated wound or split laceration. Now this explanation is given, so this is split laceration, this is inside looking, as I told you it is shin, head, chin, dorsum of elbow where less amount of subcutaneous tissue are present as I told you and it's underlying bone. You can see margin are relatively clean cut, presence of tissue breezes, less bleeding at the site of injury and hair bulb are crushed as I mentioned that this is inside looking laceration. But sometimes you can get an opposite question, what is this? Lacerated looking incised wound. Lacerated looking incised wound. Doctor, it means it is caused by sharp edge weapon, but it look like lacerated wound. And these area where it look like lacerated wound, these are scrotum. 
दीज आर स्क्रोटम एंड एक्जिला सो डॉक्टर साहब whenever image comes of scrotum and axilla like scrotum we have multiple rugosity axilla we have multiple folds whenever question given with the with the picture of scrotum and axilla please be careful the margins are looking like lacerated wound but exactly they are incised wound because of the texture of scrotum and axilla they look like lacerated wound so this is known as lacerated looking incised wound this is a very important mcq now identify this type of skull fracture as shown in image you can see these are the lines these are the lines and friend this is a very simple question it is linear or fissured fracture most common type of fracture is linear or fissured fracture what is depressed fracture it is caused by hammer or any any weapon which is a long striking surface which is a long striking weapon with a small striking surface It means like if you see hammer is a long weapon hammer is a long weapon but if you see the striking surface is small but that causes depression that causes depression that's why it is a depressed fracture ring fracture is a fracture surrounding foramen magnum ring fracture is a fracture surrounding foramen magnum and sutural separation is known as diastatic fracture sutural separation is known as diastatic fracture anyways this is a linear fracture identify the skull fracture this is very simple this is fissured fracture or linear fracture it's a most common type of skull fracture as i told you and observe if two or more fissured fracture intersecting each other as i told you this is known as comminuted fracture and observe comminuted fracture is also known as pider web fracture Comminuted fracture is also known as spider web fracture. So this is a very important MC. You can get spider web fracture is another example of comminuted fracture. Now this question: A chronic alcoholic suddenly leaves alcohol and brought to casualty in a delirious and semi-conscious state. And some students were telling, sir, after seeing a snack, a chronic alcoholic suddenly leaves the alcohol, brought to the casualty in delirious and semi-conscious state. How will you treat the case? Now, sir. this is a case uh, and this diagnosis is diagnosis of delirium tremens first of all listen first of all listen delirium tremens is the acute withdrawal state of alcohol and you can see the features are consciousness disorientation loss of recent memory tremor tranquil ataxia visual hallucination or autonomic disturbances and some students were telling me like hallucination were also mentioned in that particular case anyway simple is here we give digipam iv here this is thiamine in usual dose is given and this is correction of fluid and electrolyte is given okay so this is a very very important clouding of consciousness if it is delirious and clouding of consciousness that is a semi consciousness state is given you will pick this option that is lorazepam and thymine but oral chlordigipoxide is a drug of choice given in conscious patient again i am telling you if the patient is conscious then you will pick this one oral chlordigipoxide anyways here answer is this one lorazepam plus thymine lorazepam and thymine this is all about some questions again i am summarizing all the questions you can see you can see this one the first question first question the doctor went for hysterectomy and ureter got damaged with the consent doctor went for hysterectomy this is the answer that is known as medical malacrins medical malacrins is also known as medical adve adventure or you can see medical misadventure there may be diagnostic therapeutic or experiment okay now the second question is a part of 92 ipc and the most suitable option after excluding all other options we can get is doctrine of anticipation in life threatening condition no need for consent the flame burns we have seen this criteria rule of 9 rule of 9 just remember for the hand this is 5% this is 3% this is 1% or we can take 4 3 this is rule of 9 minimum punishment of spurious drug that is minimum here the main point is death this is life imprisonment according to drug and cosmetic act here sir neostigmine and atropine should not be given in correct bite because atropine is acetylcholine inhibitor this is a very important mcq of victim examination 164a crpc we have discussed 
identify the seeds. This is Nigeria sativus. You can see the datura, opium and marijuana. This is very important. Incised wound, multiple incised wound with clean cut margins suggest these are defense wound as I discussed. This is incised looking lacerated wound. Very, very important one. And again, I'm telling you, lacerated looking incised wound are seen on scrotum and axilla. This is a linear or fissured fracture. This is important. But if fissure fracture are intersecting each other, these are known as comminuted fracture. This is chronic alcoholic suddenly leaves alcohol and brought to the casualty in delirious and semi-conscious state. The answer will be Laura Gipam and thymine. This will be the answer. Okay. Friends, now we'll start the main thing because now the question comes. So it's very difficult to remember all the important points of forensic medicine. It's very difficult to remember all the important IPC, CRPC, Indian Evidence Act, multiple acts, POXO Act, PCP and DT Act, surrogacy acts. So is there any trick or like, like how to get rid of all this situation and how to remember the forensic medicine? But just remember, first of all, forensic Medicine is all about scoring 100%. And I would say it is the only subject. This, this, there is no intermingling with other subject. Like, you can't say forensic medicine ka kisi mein padha jata. It's not like the same thing you are you have been taught in some other subjects like uh, surgery, medicine. Not, not, no intermingling with each other. So it's, it's all or none law. It means it's 100% scoring subject. And uh, I would say, if you are revising it frequently, it's very easy to retain forensic medicine. And there are so many tricks which I have already been, I, al I already taught you in marrow classes. Marrow notes are important keys. The first is reading the notes, just go through the notes. And then revision is the key. Now, as far as like the study time allotment for forensic medicine, if you see, it's basically, it's basically you can divide in three parts. The first, the first, there's some important topics like thanatology, identification, asphyxial death, traumatology. Traumatology means injuries, mechanical injuries, all type of injuries we can discuss. So this is the first part, thanatology, identification, asphyxial death, traumatology. Trauma. Then you can divide in two part. That is sexual jurisprudence. What is sexual jurisprudence means like sexual perversion, all sexual offenses in India. Then we can go for forensic psychiatry, then medical jurisprudence. And this is the second part. Now the third, which is mainly toxicology. And the miscellaneous topic, you can take it like multiple as recent amendment recent amendment we have seen and now like recently we have seen the questions being asked about uh, multiple acts like we have not gone through example like we have seen a questions about drug and cosmetic act spurious drug leading death what is the maximum punishment or minimum punishment given so anyways just remember as far as punishment is concerned you just remember few punishments but the punishment you automatically can get by some presence of mind I would say like it's not like the punishment is like, like in this exam, in the recent times exam, what, what was the minimum punishment of spurious drug causing death? Like it is death. So definitely it goes to life imprisonment. Listen, how can we allot the time for forensic medicine? Recently we have seen like in AIMS exam, the forensic medicine, you will get almost 10 to 13, 10 to 15 questions. I have seen like recent AIMS, AIMS exam for last three years, you are, you are getting almost 10 to 15 questions. In NEET exam, definitely it's almost 10 to 15 questions. So forensic is not a minor subject and it's not a major subject. It's between minor and major. And it's not the subject like you can rule it out like, sir, my forensic nahi pada, to bhi kaam chal jayega. No, 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 it's not like that. It's 100% scoring subject. And I have seen by my experience, I can say like if you are reading forensic medicine in precise and concise manner, you can get 100% output. You can get 100% output. Generally, no question comes out of the syllabus. Like I have discussed the forensic paper June 2020 in Marrow and you can see almost every question has come from the notes. Nice. Maybe like sometime it's we can the exclusion criteria is very important. Some questions which are prepared by some great faculties of India, especially by AIMS. 
So they check your presence of mind at the time of examination, at the time of paper. And this is the basic thing. Now, how to read forensic medicine? Look, sir, reading is the first important part, but the revision is the most important part. Revise it frequently. Revise it frequently. According to me, like I have made a separate section of recent amendment in law and recent changes in the law and new acts which have been have been established by Indian government according to 2013 CRPC. The CRPC amendment bill, that's very important. So we have seen POXO Act, very important one, PCP and DT Act, surrogacy bill, mental health establishment bill. So there are so many changes in the recent law. And as far as thanatology is concerned, few images are, are very important, especially post-mortem changes. You can see the marbling I have seen in examination, Kevorkian sign, which is a very important sign. So these are some important images. You just go through it. Identification is very important. And in identification, we can see some important features of uh, age estimation, especially using teeth. These are the questions which are frequently asked. Like what are the method, Gustafsson method, Lemondal method, Boyde's method, Stack method, Lemondine methods. Just go through this. Asphyxial death. Yes, this is a very important topic. And uh, many times questions are being asked in a very simple manner, asphyxial death. So just see the, just differentiate the finding of hanging strangulation throttling. This is a very important part. Traumatology. In traumatology, I think ballistic is very important part. Forensic ballistic is very, very important one. Mechanical injuries are very important one. This mechanical injuries, you just go through the mechanical injuries. What are the types of injury? And especially the injury which are incised looking lacerated, less lacerated looking incised. These are some injury which are very important. Now I'm coming to the next part that is sexual jurisprudence. Look, sir, many times we get a question. You'll see doctor, every time we get a question about examination of accused, examination of victim. Especially you can see the cases of sexual assault in India, what are the recent changes in cases of adultery, unnatural sexual offenses, what are the changes we have seen? These are some important ones. Forensic psychiatry is also a very important one. But see, psychiatry is a different thing and the forensic psychiatry is an important thing. Because like in this, we have to see the medical legal aspect of an insane person if he or she commits the crime. That's a forensic psychiatry is a different thing. So just go through, go through the different act, American Law Institute test, Browner's rule, Durham's rule, just see the important content. Then medical jurisprudence, what is medical jurisprudence? All the legal proceedings, all the legal proceeding is very important here. And apart from medical jurisprudence, you see the court procedure. What are the important IPC, CRPC and Indian Evidence Act during court procedure? What are the examination of witnesses and see the act? And actually, if you see the act and if you see the punishment, it's very simple to differentiate between act and punishment. So just go, go through the different IPC and CRPC and try to remember, but revise it frequently. You can make some sticky notes and you can put on your wall and you can remember or revise it every day. Now, most of the people used to say, sir, how to revise, how to remember important IPC and CRPC. The best way to remember all these things is revision. Revision is the key. Revision is the key. And the last but not the least, you can get recent changes in the law, multiple changes in the law. That's a very important one. And toxicology. In toxicology, if you see the certain law are related with the toxicology first. Second, if you see treatment part is important and then we can pick out the particular poison. Especially the irritant poison, plant poison, snacks, alcohol, Cannabis, cannabis product, opium products, the different name and the method of taking like snorting, smoking, ingestion, inhalation, peeping. These are some methods you can remember in toxicology. So according to me, the forensic is the subject to score maximum. Don't think like it's okay, sir, I do it. I'll get 50% marks out of this. No, no, no. It's not like that. It is the subject. If you are getting 100% marks, that means 
that means you are going to get very good rank in your examination so be careful and uh, friends uh, the main thing like we are going through a very critical phase the corona pandemic right now actually i completed my md forensic medicine from aims delhi i know like, it's very difficult to get rid of this situation but please concentrate on your study and just do whatever you want to do aap mast raho khush raho masti se padho tension mat lo don't think so much ki mere ko ye karna mere ko ye karna mere ko ye karna the think about the study part aur agar aap acha revision karte ho aap bahut achhe tarike se padhai karte ho to aapki rank aur aapke score definitely improve karenge and you'll get very good rank in good institutions and if you see most of the time what we do what we commit as a mistake like we read most of the things we study most of the things when, but we don't revise it properly so like when the exam comes we become like little bit nervous so what to do next so whatever you have read you have gone through just revise it properly aap usko bar bar revise karte jao masti se revise karo and uh, like marrow notes of forensic medicine are very good sufficient enough to crack any exam i have seen most of the questions are being asked from examination from marrow notes and uh, even after going through the marrow notes you can get my book from jp publication this is review of forensic medicine by dr aklesh raj jamad with my friend he is also a msonian dr rajnikanth swain so you can go through that book but marrow notes are the gold you just go through the notes can get the book and prepare you will get very good rank i wish you the best of luck for your exam and don't get nervous at any cost you are preparing for yourself you will get very good rank best of luck good luck